Hello and welcome to what is a tutorial video. In this video, my plan is to show you how you can utilize Google Maps to create routes in Garmin Basecamp, which honestly is a great piece of software. If it were 2007, it's just a very dated software. It's not very easy to work with, but don't worry, you can use Google Maps to create the routes and then import them into Basecamp, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. The only downside to this is that you're going to need a Google account, and ultimately, at the end of the day, any edits that you need to do are going to be easier made in Google and the Google Maps software than they will be in Basecamp. Uh, Basecamp, again, it's just not very easy to use. So let's go ahead and get things started. First things first, you need a Google account. Once you have a Google account, go to maps.google.com. Simple as that. Once you're there, it's going to look something like this or zoomed into wherever you are. I'm just zoomed into the Southeast where I live. And the first thing we're going to do to get to our maps is click these, it's called a hamburger uh, menu or something like that. Basically it's three lines, three horizontal lines stacked over each other. You're then gonna come down here to saved and that's gonna open this. You want the last option, which is maps, and then open my maps. Once you're here, you can go ahead and bookmark this page so you don't have to go through that in the future. But let's go ahead and start here. As you can see, I've got a few. You have some that I have made. I also have one that I did not make. It's not owned by me, it's owned by somebody else, but it will update here as they make changes, which is kind of cool. You can share these with friends. So if you've got friends that also use a Garmin navigator of some kind, you can send them the information here. So I'm gonna stay with owned and I'm going to click create a new map. So create new map, it's going to open up here, it's gonna show me the whole country. It can feel like a rather daunting task, but it's actually very easy to do. All you have to do is scroll using the wheel on your mouse, scroll in, scroll out, do whatever you would normally do in Google Maps. I'm just gonna to go to Charlotte because it's a major metro. We're gonna zoom right into downtown, there's the football stadium. Now, I wanna create my first waypoint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here that says add marker. It's right here across the top. I'm going to click that. I'm going to click where I wanna add the marker and it gives it a name. It says point one. Here's where the changes to accommodate the Garmin Basecamp software come in. Unfortunately, when you import this into the Garmin software, it brings them in alphabetically. Point one will not fall before point two. It will actually fall before point 10 or point 11. So what you actually need to do is add a leading zero, point zero one. You can also name them whatever you want. So in this case, I could say football stadium, but also understand that Garmin is going to bring them in alphabetically. For me, I like point zero one, save. Then I'm going to find another waypoint. Uh, let's say I wanna go to, uh, let's go east. And let's say I know somewhere out here is a national forest. There it is, Uwari National Forest. Let's say I wanna go to Morrow Mountain State Park first. So I'm going to zoom in. <clears throat> There's an overlook up here somewhere. There it is. So let's go add another marker right there. And again, leading zeros, point zero two, save, close, and then I can keep doing that. Keep adding your markers as you need to up until you get to a point where you feel confident that you're done, that when you bring it into Basecamp, it will map it the way that you wanna map it. Again, leading zeros all the way up until 10, then after that, whatever it names it, 10, 11, 12, et cetera, you don't have to make those changes. Let's say, however, that you would love to see a satellite view of some of this. The way you do that is you come here to where it says base map. You click that down and you can choose your different views, satellite being one of them. Now you can click, drag, view, do whatever you need to do. And if you ever need to change back, again, where it says base map, choose the one you want and continue to add your markers or waypoints. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch, basically until I get past 10, and then I will come back and we'll show you how to export this and then import it into Basecamp. All right, so as you can see, I now have 12 points on this map. So my 12 waypoints are my 12 markers. 
Now let's talk about renaming. When you bring it into uh, Garmin Basecamp, it's going to come in as whatever you name your list in Basecamp as. But to know if you're going to do multiples of these, to know which one is which, I rename this. So you're going to click your three dots on this part, rename this layer. Let's do test map. And then you can also rename this, which I do because then it's easier for me to see once I get to my maps. So I, here you don't click the three dots, it's backwards. You actually click the name, test map. Okay, test map, test map, good. Now what I actually want to do is I want to export. So I'm gonna click my three little dots up here and export to KMLKMZ. Here is where other tutorials show you to do things slightly different. Other tutorials will say export as KML instead of KMZ does not support all icons. I have not had any issues exporting this exactly as you see it. The only change that I make is I do not export the entire map. I export just the bit that I did. So from the drop down, I choose test map because that's what I'm doing. And now I'm going to download. And there's the test map that I downloaded. So let's go ahead and go into Basecamp now, and I'll show you how you can create this in here. This is how my Basecamp currently looks. I'm actually in the process of overhauling it, which is why I wanted to make this tutorial. The first thing you need to do is you need to create these folders. The way you create these folders is under the My Collection, you're going to right click if you're on a Windows machine like I am, and you're going to create new list folder, this one here. Once you have these new list folders, it will look something like this, this blended road and paved road, and then you can create subfolders within that as well. As you can see, I've chosen east of Charlotte and west of Charlotte previously. I'll probably change that up. So once you get into the folder, you're going to right click and you're going to create new list, which is your second to last option as of the filming of this. So new list, I'm just gonna name it test map because that's what I named it in Google. And I'm going to get so I can see my uh, desktop. So now I've got test map, there's nothing in here, there are no points. I'm going to click and drag this over to test map. And then you can see it brought in all my points. Now you see why the leading zeros are very important because if I had just left one, two, three, four, et cetera, it would have changed the one down to under 12. So my first point would have been my second to last point on this. So let's go ahead and make that big again. Now, here is where you need to plug your navigator into your machine, whether it's Windows machine, Apple's machine, again, I'm using Windows. You need to plug it in via USB. And the reason for that is what you're going to have by default is this global map option. If I create the route using global map, it's going to think I'm flying a plane. It's going to ignore all roads and it's going to create the route as the crow would fly or straight lines. That's obviously not how we drive. So you need to plug your navigator in so you can get these other maps. In this case, City Navigator North America. Um, da, 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 certain options will be performed. So would you like to use the installed version instead? Yes, remember the installed version, that's fine. Okay, now how do I create a route? I can see it dropped all these little flags for me. Well, I'm going to want to create the route. So I'm going to click on one of the points. I'm going to control A on my keyboard to select all. And then I'm going to right click and create route using selected waypoints. Now it's going to do that based on the profile that I've chosen. Here it just says driving, you can create many different profiles. In fact, let me show you that. There's a bunch of them in here. Obviously, there's a bunch you can choose from and you can set each one of these profiles up through your settings to be kind of what you want. I want to avoid tolls, I want to avoid highways and you can set that for each one of these. I'm just gonna leave it at driving and I'm going to create route using selected waypoints. And as it builds this, you'll see it progress on the bar. Sometimes it can take a while for these to build depending upon your driving profile. If you say, I don't want to use, um, let's say tolls for instance, or I wanna use curvy roads, or I want to avoid interstates, it will take longer to build that way. If you just have it be like, yeah, just get me there the fastest, I don't care if I have to pay tolls or use highways, it's going to build faster. Obviously also the longer the route, the more waypoints, 
then you're going to it's going to take longer to build in the system. So let's jump back here. We can see that it has been built. Wonderful. So let's zoom in and take a look at how it has us doing this. Yep, Morrow Mountain. And then it's got me going on all these other points that I put in. That looks great. It doesn't skip anything. It looks like it takes all the roads I want it to take. It looks good to me. All right, so it looks good. But now I want to rename it because point 17 to point 122 doesn't sound very good. Also, how am I going to know what that is within my navigator? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename that. The way you do that is you actually come down here and double click and it pulls it up and I can rename it right here. So I'm going to rename it test map route. And once I do that, you'll see it changes down here for me too. So you don't really have to save. It auto saves as it goes along. If I needed to reorder any of these points, this is where I would do it. I can click and drag, and I can move it down, and then I can recalculate uh, the route. Obviously, I don't want to do that. I want to leave it back the way it was. I can also change my driving profile here and say, oh, you know what? I selected driving. I actually wanted motorcycling, or I wanted mountaineering, or cycling, or walking, or hiking, or whatever that is. So I'm going to leave that. Also, you can change your color and say all of my hiking tracks are going to be green because I'm in the forest and all of my on road driving maps are going to be black because it's pavement. However, you want to do that. So I'm going to change that to green. And as you can see here, now it's changed it. So now it's going straight as the arrow. Right now it's going as if it wasn't using a map and that's because I was dragging some of these around. I click recalculate and it will rebuild those points using actual roads. And there we are. So I can go ahead and close this out now and you can see it's no longer thinking I'm flying a plane. Now I'm actually driving a vehicle on the road. So it built this. There's my map. Cool. Everything looks good. All right. So to send this to your device, there's a couple different ways you can do it. But the way that I like to do it is I click on the one I was just looking at, the list, and then I choose this option, which is send test map to device. device. And that's gonna do two things. It's going to send all of those waypoints that are created on the map. So they'll show up as little hearts or favorites on my device. So if I'm ever not actively using the track, I will know where those waypoints are. They'll show on my map for me. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is this might not be where it is on my toolbar up here because you can actually click and drag these things around and kind of create what you need or what you want and how you want to reorder them. That's just where I have mine. But yeah, that's how you use Google Maps to develop a route or create your waypoints to then import into Basecamp because the alternative in Basecamp is having to click this button every single time and remembering to go back to the hand to move and then you create the route and then you have to reorder. And also trying to build it off of this isn't nearly as friendly as building it off of something like this. Again, the software is great, but it is definitely dated. I hope this video helps you. It definitely uh, has helped me watching others kind of teach me how to do it and also a little bit of trial and error on my end. So I'm actually gonna go in now and rebuild all of my maps and re-upload them into Garmin Basecamp. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you on the next episode.